Hi, I'm Philip Kiley, and I'm a senior computer science student at Grinnell College. Unfortunately, a lot of my friends have lost their summer internships or post-graduation jobs recently. I made a list of seven side hustles for computer science students. The things on this list are not replacements for those lost jobs or internships, but they are something to do with your time, with the potential to make some real money and level up your skills. This video is targeted towards college students and recent graduates in computer science and related topics, but if you know how to program, then this video is for you. It does assume that you're at least 18 years old and you are legally able to work where you live. There can be legal or tax implications from doing various jobs on this list. Look into any requirements before starting the work. These are all strategies that I have used myself or my friends have used to make money. To qualify for this list, the side hustle should be capable of generating at least $1,000 in your first month. That is no guarantee, and some of these options have highly variable earnings. Also, every side hustle on this list will be a chance for you to practice and grow your skills in programming and computer science or related topics. Finally, every single one of these side hustles is 100% remote. Some don't even require video calls. I'm going to leave plenty of links in the video description with resources to help you get started with each of these seven opportunities. Hustle number one, write technical articles. With many people staying at home, the market for how-to guides and learning materials is bigger than ever. As programmers invest our free time in learning new skills and technologies, technical publishers are looking for high quality articles on every subject imaginable. Writing technical articles is my number one side hustle and it has been a very rewarding enterprise. For over a year, I have been writing technical tutorials for clients. Over that time, I have made thousands of dollars, gained tons of new skills, and reached hundreds of thousands of readers with my work. Here's an example. I was paid $500 to write this tutorial for Twilio. I built a sample application using Django and Twilio SendGrid and explain to readers exactly how they could build a similar system themselves. For an up-to-date list on publishers to query, check out whopaystechnicalwriters.com. Also, if you want to learn how to write technical tutorials, read my book, Writing for Software Developers, which you can buy at philipkiley.com WFSD, link in the description below. Hustle number two, reporting bug bounties. For every story you read where a company is facing fines and lawsuits for losing data to hackers, there are thousands that do not happen thanks to the efforts of security researchers and bug hunters. Being a security researcher is basically the digital equivalent of being a bounty hunter in an old western movie. You find vulnerabilities in websites, disclose them responsibly to the company, and are paid based on the severity of the issue if you are the first to report it. This is a practice that takes care and skill to do well. You have to have both general knowledge about how apps and websites work, as well as a deep understanding of specific attacks and countermeasures to be able to develop novel exploits on production systems. You may attack a website for days at a time before finding any leads, and there is no guarantee that your efforts will pay off. However, if you do find an issue and report it successfully, rewards range from $100 for small issues on mid-sized sites to tens of thousands of dollars for major vulnerabilities on large sites. The largest companies, like Google, run their own bug bounty programs. Smaller companies use platforms like HackerOne and BugCrowd to coordinate their disclosure programs. These platforms offer free educational resources to help you get started in bug hunting. Hustle number three, remote tutoring. With schools closed and students stuck at home, parents everywhere are worried about their children's educations. Some of these people have a lot of money to invest in their children's futures. You can use your skills in computer science and other STEM topics and tutor these kids to further their education. I would aim towards teaching high school students with an interest in STEM topics. You might have to do some Calculus 1 and statistics to fill in the gaps between teaching things like programming. Rely on existing educational resources, textbooks, videos, and worksheets created by professionals. You provide accountability, enthusiasm, and guidance while also answering questions and identifying and clearing up any misunderstanding that your pupils might have about the material. Hustle number four, independent freelancing. Just because companies aren't hiring doesn't mean that there isn't work to be done. Plenty of businesses hire freelance developers for discrete projects at good hourly rates. The trick is to find these opportunities. You need to be able to prove your ability to deliver value quickly. 
Don't limit yourself to just programming. Documentation, quality assurance, IT support, and other programming adjacent skills are also in high demand. Focus on the business value you provide, not the tech you use. Your clients are hiring you for specific results, and it's up to you how you get them. Hustle number five, platform freelance jobs. If you cannot find any freelancing jobs on your own, you can turn to freelancing platforms to connect you with work. Two popular platforms are Upwork and Fiverr, where basically anyone can register as a client or as a freelancer. I have three issues with these kinds of platforms. The first is race to the bottom pricing. Basically, you bid on freelance jobs, and frequently the client's going to select whoever bid the lowest, which puts a real constraint on the amount of money you're able to earn. Another issue is that these platforms charge very high network fees, up to 20% on Upwork, which really cuts into your earnings. They also have platform lock-in, where you're not allowed to move your clients off of the platform and develop an individual relationship with them. Finally, these platforms can often attract low quality clients with low budgets who don't know exactly what they want, which can lead to a bad outcome for everyone involved. Some freelancing networks solve this by acting as a gatekeeper for both clients and freelancers. However, these platforms often have strict requirements of a number of years of work experience. As a college student, you probably will not qualify for these higher tier networks regardless of your actual skill level. Because of these issues, I encourage you to find clients yourself rather than relying on a platform or agency. I cannot recommend working with a freelancing network unless you're able to get in with a reputable one that validates its freelancers and, more importantly, its clients. Hustle number six, local IT freelancing. Wherever you live, there are hundreds of local small and medium-sized businesses struggling to digitize their operation in days or weeks without spending enormous amounts of money. I have a friend down in Austin who works at a local garden supply store. They have moved to online ordering with curbside pickup, but their on-site inventory system is not connected to their online ordering system, leading to constant issues with determining what is in stock. Businesses in your area are facing similar problems and need competent IT freelancers at reasonable rates. Avoid the temptation to provide these clients with custom software development work. Creatively use existing site builders, e-commerce platforms, no-code automation tools, and other out-of-the-box solutions to meet their needs. This will help you deliver reliable solutions that are cost-effective and low-maintenance in way less time than developing something completely custom. Hustle number seven, make an app or website. This one is high risk, high reward. Let's say 100 smart, motivated college juniors in CS programs at good schools try to make an app or website in a month which is, by the way, a ridiculously aggressive schedule for anything but the most basic of such projects. Of those 100 people, I would bet that 90 don't even finish. Of the 10 that finish, nine make something that doesn't get any traction. For the 99th percentile, that one person who did the best, they might get a good amount of traffic, but without a good monetization model, that won't convert into any money. When I say did the best, I don't necessarily mean wrote the best code, but rather did the best job of figuring out what people will actually want to use. If you decide to go down this road, look for resources that can help you develop and host your product. Use popular open source frameworks and libraries to build your website more quickly and take advantage of free credits on major hosting platforms to get it up and running. Building a product is hard, but the harder part is getting attention and sales. If you do decide to make an app or website, make sure that it is a project that you are interested in and will help you develop your skills. Even if the project doesn't turn into a commercial success, it can still be a successful investment in your own skills and abilities. One great starter project is a personal website. Here's mine. You can make a personal website in any technology, host it on any platform. All that matters is that it's about you and it's an expression of your skills and interests. Bonus hustle, invest in yourself. There are good companies hiring programmers right now, and there are still an incredible number of good jobs in computer science out there. Unless you're a senior, you have time to wait for the market to recover. Practice fundamental interview skills, grind algorithms, learn popular frameworks like React and Rails that you might not learn in class. If you can level up your skills enough now to secure a higher paying job or internship next year, then that is one of the best investments you can make. 
Let's say your work this summer helps you make an extra $10,000 a year when you graduate, a very reasonable amount to negotiate under ordinary economic circumstances. That value will compound over time. It's hard to think about the future, and this is a lot of work that doesn't help at all if you need the money right now. Still, if you can make this investment, it's worth it to do so. So let's wrap this up. Which one of these strategies will you be using? Do you have any other creative ideas for how to use your skills? Leave a like and a comment describing your plans and share this video with your friends who are looking for ideas of what to do over the summer. Again, I left a bunch of useful resources in the video description. So if one of these side hustles sounds like something you'd like to do, take a look at those links to get started.